Let me be clear, there is a disturbing rise in hatred, extremism, anti-Semitism in this country. We've seen it on display in the course of the past 12 months, and unless we do something to stop it, it will continue to rise. For the first time ever, the ADL is releasing something that we call the heat map, and our heat map stands for hatred, extremism, anti-Semitism, and terrorism where for nearly two decades, the ADL has been tracking and monitoring incidents of hatred, extremism, anti-Semitism, and terrorism across the country. And what we've done for the first time ever is combine all these data sets into one interactive map that we'll be launching on the one year anniversary of the Unite the Right rally. If I had to pick three factors that go into some of the increases that we've seen on white supremacy and hatred and extremism across the country, Number one, 25 years ago when people espoused these types of ideas, they didn't have many platforms to express their kind of horrific ideas or positions. In today's day and age, with the prominence of various online and social media platforms, they're finding more outlets to anonymously get their ideas out. Second is the ease at which white supremacists can organize among themselves, that they can fundraise, they can share and exchange ideas and best practices for real world in-person marches, for crowdfunding online and so on. And three, and really this is one of the most troubling, is the divisive rhetoric that we see at a national level in our both civic and political discourse has really given way to a lot of these ideas to flourish and expand in cities and municipalities across the country. The only way that this country can come together to heal on a whole host of issues is when people in positions of leadership, both young and old, and it's not just limited to people in elected office, young people in this country have been some of the most vocal advocates for denouncing hatred and bigotry and extremism and anti-Semitism in this country. And we as ADL and other like-minded civil society organizations need to find ways to lift up those voices and help them project the positive messages that they carry of tolerance, inclusion, and pluralism that I think more Americans need to hear. The main takeaway is that there is power in the data of tracking and assessing hatred, extremism, anti-Semitism, and terrorism. Looking at these data sets individually doesn't give you a complete picture. We see white supremacists and neo-Nazi types use a similar path for recruitment and radicalization to violence that foreign terrorist organizations have used in the past decade plus in the post 9-11 decade. And so what we're really trying to do is get ahead of that opportunity for these organizations to recruit and radicalize individuals and hopefully put an end to the spread of their message. Over the course of the past decade, we've seen the, the, the white supremacist movement in the US evolve over several different challenges. There is a significant threat to public safety and public security when these groups do come together and organize both in person, offline, as well as in online spaces. We really call on all Americans to come together to push back on this type of ideology, both online and offline, knowing that these groups will find a way to overcome the challenges that they face when it comes to organizing real world or online, and it's only a matter of time before they find a way to get back on track and back on their message.